the Structural Heart Program at Terrebonne General Medical Center provides innovative multidisciplinary care for patients with advanced and complex structural heart disease. From evaluation to treatment, this unique program is designed to deliver the best possible outcomes for each and every patient. TGMC is the only facility in the region to offer a comprehensive program for the innovative treatment of valve disorders and heart defects. Dr. Peter Fail, Director of Cardiac Catheterization Lab and Interventional Research and Interventional Cardiologist, and Dr. Edgar Feinberg, cardiovascular thoracic surgeon, is with us today to discuss the Structural Heart Program at TGMC. Good evening and welcome to Your Health with TGMC. Very glad to have two esteemed colleagues here, Dr. Feinberg, Dr. Fayo, talking a little bit about the Structural Heart Program. Dr. Feinberg, tell us what that is. Well, I'm a, I'm a, a heart surgeon and Peter Fayo is a cardiologist, so we worked, we've worked together for uh, for years, he and I, but generations, surgeons and cardiologists have worked together to take care of patients with a variety of heart conditions. Most commonly, we think about bypass. Right. But um, over the years, there's a lot of other things that we've been treating, valve disease, uh, holes in the heart, defects, things like that. And most of, almost all of those required open surgery. Mm -hmm. um, as we've begun to use balloons for blockage, we've seen that um, the cardiologists, like Peter, interventional cardiologists, have had new tools available to them to take care of problems inside the heart that used to require patients to go to surgery and have open heart surgery. So what we've done is, in not just us, but all over the country, programs like ours have pushed all those together into a single program instead of your cardiology program and your heart surgery program. So we've now unified our procedures, our teams, we have clinics, so we see patients so we can do a whole variety of procedures that require us to collaborate to give the newest technology, uh, get patients really back to work faster, back into their life faster, to try to, f we're trying to, to fix people's heart w without cutting them open. Well, right. well, that's what I do mostly, but, right. but um, it sure does take the starch out of you, as I had one of my patients say. <laughs> so um, okay. it's nice to have another way to do yeah. it. Oh, very nice, very nice. And so, uh, Dr. Phil, what are some of those structural heart defects, and do they only involve the heart? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think that's the, the program that we, uh, that Edgar and I uh, have uh, basically started uh, several years ago, uh, really look at the heart. It started out uh, originally with uh, mitral regurgitation, the use of a mitral clip, and okay. it's uh, progressed into uh, aortic stenosis, uh, pulmonary, uh, patent foramen ovales. Uh, we do perivalvular leaks uh, in, in valves that uh, Edgar puts in, uh, or other surgeons put in. Occasionally, people, uh, a stitch will break, and they'll, they'll be caused in a leak, and to go to surgery is a big deal, so we're able to fix those. Um, those patients who have had valves put in previously, uh, we know historically um, porcine or pig valves uh, last for a finite period of time, and, and right. some now, these people are now 80 years old, and the thought of going in for a second surgery uh, becomes pretty daunting, so we've been able to actually fix them uh, in sort of a catheter-based intervention. And then recently, over the past couple of years, been able to take care of those patients with atrial fibrillation uh, in taking care of the left atrial appendage so we can, uh, those patients who can't take the blood thinners, mm -hmm. uh, we're able to take care of the uh, offending agent that causes a stroke or the left atrial appendage by either removing it or plugging it. Wow. Um, which is a pretty, uh, pretty neat task. And I think we have a picture of what maybe a normal, um, what is a little bit no more normal for the heart versus something that may be uh, yeah. needing and, more and help, so, like so a, you see a, there for on a the valve. Left, that basically, this is aortic stenosis, and, and what happens over time, the, the uh, valve on the left there, obviously, is a normal valve, trileaflet valve, and the valve on the right is basically a stenotic valve, and what you see is this nodular calcium. This is what uh, Dr. Feinberg sees in the operating room, actually sees this kind of a picture, okay. if you will, where it's a lot of nodular calcium. But what happens, it basically prevents the valve from opening. Okay. And so, you know, the way to basically put that is if you, if you have a pump and you basically clog the outflow of the pump, the pump's going to burn out. And that, for all intents and purposes, what you see on the right-hand side, it, it's a clogged valve. It doesn't open up correctly, and therefore, uh, we're able to fix that now with a new stent valve technology. Okay. Uh, for either of you, what are some of the causes of those structural heart defects? Well, patients are born sometimes with problems with their valve. While at birth, it might not be significant, but as they age, uh, it can it can cause the valve to scar and age, so they get their valves deteriorate when they're 
in middle age or younger. Okay. That's one cause. Of course, you know, cigarette smoking and the right. problems that that has. Right. People can have uh, rheumatic fever, although it's not as common today as it used to be. Mm-hmm. Um, but but we still get some a lot of elderly patients that had rheumatic fever as a child. Okay. And that causes the valves to deteriorate as well. Pete? And then age himself. I mean, just, you know, it just it seems like there there's probably just the age and the fact that we are all... Uh, living longer, sure. uh, we're starting to see more in this, uh, more and more of this because uh, you know, 50 years ago, the average age, uh, 60s, 70s. Now we're really seeing a lot of 80 and 90 year olds in our clinics almost on a daily basis, right. uh, who now have reached an age of where a uh, a problem like aortic stenosis now arises his ugly head, where uh, years, you know, 50 years ago they would have been long past for other other uh, modalities. Okay. Wow. And so, what is how? What is the diagnosis? How do we come up with the diagnosis of these things? I think. Go ahead. Uh, you know, a structural heart problem. Like I said, this is kind of now a big bucket. Right. So, right. so we're talking about the. We've put these patients together and grouped them, and we see them. Like I said, in an organized program and in clinics together, we see the patients together. We have nurses and teams organized around this. Um, but structural heart itself is n- the program is not geared towards any specific disease. Okay, it is it is a way of managing problems in the heart using catheters without having to do open heart surgery. They may get incisions, but very often the incisions are nowhere near the chest. They're okay. uh, somewhere where we can access the artery with our catheters, and some of these tools are quite large mm-hmm. relative to the artery, and so we so we have to open the skin to get to the artery. To, but, but actually, as they're developing more and more, the trend is for things to get smaller and smaller. Mm-hmm. And actually, the valve you saw a while ago, mm-hmm. uh, when we put it into the patient's body, it's the size of a pencil. Wow. Wow. Very nice. And again, that's another good shot. That would be treated with uh, something that would be the size catheter, of cat- a pencil, a catheter. Yeah. Right. Yeah, catheter. That actually enters the artery as, as the size of a pencil, but right. then as the special metal, it warms up. It goes back to the size of the uh, of the valve itself. Wow. And, and that yeah. valve's about the size of a quarter. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, okay. You know, so you get an idea of you know, a quarter to 50 cent piece, depending upon the size of the patient, right. what we're dealing with. Well, gentlemen, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to talk about some of those interventions that you provide and some of the things that they can do to help save lives with these new methods. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. This place is huge. Welcome, ladies. Yes, your heart screenings. What are the show times? The screening is actually a test. Oh, so more of a whodunit movie, right? You learn about the health of your oh, heart. spoiler alert. <laughs> Let's get you two scheduled. We brought our own snacks. Did you? (laughs) With our Women's Health Center, Terrebonne General Medical Center is revolutionizing the community's approach to health care. TGMC, a new way of health. Welcome back to To Your Health with TGMC. I'm joined by Dr. Feinberg, Dr. Fayo, talking a little bit about this structural heart program and what it means. And so, Dr. Fayo, tell us what a little bit about why a person would seek out this kind of treatment. You know, one of the, the, the starting points of this whole program was for those patients who had a disease process that typically would be treated by surgery. Mm-hmm. However, they had a significant amount of comorbidities, whether they've had previous open heart surgery whether they've had diabetes, cancer, or, or some other uh, uh, modality that pro- probably would put them at an inordinate surgical risk. They've had chest radiation. They've had trauma to the chest. They've had ca- uh, you know, all, all kinds of things. Right. And, and what we've done, and, and we being the, the, uh, the Society of Thoracic Surgery, has put together a list and said, you know, if you have this bunch of problems, then they can give you a number. And so we start to see people that uh, these numbers would run 10, 15, 20 as, as a, a risk, it really puts the a person at a very, very high risk for an open heart surgery. So that's why these, these treatment st- uh, strategies uh, have been developed. And that's where those patients are being usually referred to us from other cardiologists who have seen the patient, made the diagnosis and said, you're not a good surgical risk. I'm going to send you to a, to a structural heart program. Wow. And, and speaking of that, uh, let's talk about some of the things that you use in the treatment of this. And we have some pictures at home as you guys talk mm-hmm. about this. But let's talk about the treatment that you guys use, this innovative treatment. So uh, this right here is, is a core valve. This is one of the uh, trials that Edgar and I were part of. Uh, this actually took a look at this st- uh, specific uh, uh, stent trial design. You can see it's kind of uh, made out of a nitinol. And this is actually has a porcine pericardium valve sewn in it. 
takes about a day to hand. It's handmade. Okay. Uh, uh, made out in in uh, California and uh, gets shipped to us. Uh, but this is uh, because of this metal, we can actually shrink this down. We put it in ice water, shrink it down to about the size of a pencil. And it basically can go through the uh, artery in the leg and then uh, wind up uh, uh, getting to the heart where we can unravel it and, and basically open uh, in the valve. And then this becomes the patient's valve. Um, this has progressed into other, other technologies, a newer, a newer uh, valve now called the Evolute, which uh, we did too today uh, wow. that uh, um, so uh, we're able to do. Okay. Um, so the technology is really exploding, and, and, and that's huge, uh, what you see. Okay. I think the next one is a clip. This is a mitral clip. This is actually how the program actually started. This, uh, we were asked about uh, eight years ago to participate in this trial, and this actually took care of those patients who had mitral regurgitation. Uh, so the mitral valve was leaking. Uh, surgery would be the conventional uh, way to fix that, whether with a valve replacement or valve repair, but the patients uh, you would be prohibitive risk because of heart failure or other uh, problems, and uh, we were able to put this in. And this is uh, a way of actually clipping the two leaflets together. And I always sort of equate that as when you went to the doctor with a broken finger, he would actually splint one finger uh, as a, as a, use one finger as a splint for the other finger. And that's basically what this does. This basically splints one valve and uses one valve as a splint for the other one, holding it together so it doesn't pop off. And that basically reduced the much regurgitation. That was a, a springboard to all the other things that we currently do now. Wow, so very neat. Uh, Sean, do we have any other pictures that they can explain? Doc? This is a, a Sapien S3. This is the latest uh, uh, valve from Edwards that is uh, yep. currently on, on uh, what we're doing now. And this is a balloon expandable uh, valve as opposed to the first valve you saw with self-expanding. And, and one of the things that we do in the structural heart program, Edgar and I will look at the, the individual patient and try to determine what would be a better valve and why would it be a better valve. There's some uh, upsides and downsides of all of the technology. And we try to tailor it and to see what would be the best option for this patient. So we're, we're not married to one specific technology. So we always use this or always use that. We kind of look at it and say, you know, this is a better technology because of this or because of your anatomy. Uh, the other valve may be better. And so we try to figure out what works best for the patient so at the end of the day they get a better outcome and hopefully uh, get out of the hospital sooner uh, with uh, doing much better. Back to a normal life. Uh, what can patients expect from your program, from TGMC Structural Heart Program? What can they expect? Well, what they can expect is they'll be <clears throat> excuse me, treated by a team. That means we, we, have a, we have a clinic, a valve clinic. It's not very common for patients to go see the doctor and see more than one doctor in the same examining room at the same visit. I do know patients get sent all over the hospital, back and forth, to and fro doctors and departments, but what right. we've done is we've organized it into one clinic so to, to try to make it more convenient for patients as well. Uh, the things that Dr. Fail were talking about, about selecting the right device for the right patient. And because I come from a surgical background, is, is my training, and Dr. Fail comes from the interventional cardiology background, there are things that we benefit each other and likewise the patient because we collaborate and we do it right there when we see the patients. We can go, we look at the CAT scans together, the angiograms together, we look at the patients together, and then we discuss which way we think's available that's, that, that makes the most sense for that patient. It, it's truly collaborative, and it's much like this, this TGMC's new hybrid OR. So let's talk about how that will be utilized in your structural heart program. Well, the, the hybrid OR is is the auditorium, if you will, um, okay. for us to for us to begin to do even more of these kind of procedures. And you see from the picture, uh, this is a, um, a 3D uh, representation of what we're building. But this allows us, it's a cath lab where normally just the balloons and stents and the cornea angiograms are done. Right. But also has everything you need for doing open heart surgery in the operating room, in an operating room environment. Wow. So we're using personnel and teams from both areas of the hospital, the cath lab and the operating room. And of course, you have a surgeon from the operating room, Dr. Fail from the cath lab. Wow. So it gives us the opportunity to do all of those things to patients uh, in the same location. Um, it, it improves our skill, it improves the skill and training of our team, and it's the, it's the right way to do this. Right. And um, this concept is new and, and uh, of the hybrid operating room. Wow. And um, most of the time you've got to go to a place like, um, you know, Harvard or Mayo Clinic or Stanford, but we're putting it here in Homa. 
That's fantastic. So much to the advantage. And now we want to make sure people know how to get more information. We're going to put that up on the screen. For more information, you can visit www.tgmc.com or you can go to TGMC's Facebook page or you can always call 985-873-4616. Dr. Feinberg, Dr. Fail, cannot thank you enough for what you do every day to save lives, for the way that you're doing it in this new technology. And we appreciate it so much. We're lucky to have you guys. Certainly lucky to have you all here in the joint effort with TGMC. Thank you, Keith. Thank you, guys. All right, that'll do it for us with To Your Health with TGMC. Don't go anywhere. Sports is next.